Nowadays, it's incredibly hard to stay focused. There's so many distractions that are around us at any given moment. Um, your pocket vibrates at any given moment because you're getting 10 new emails and on social media there's all these new notifications and the phone is ringing and your kids need help and your colleagues are coming up because you are working in an open office plan and they're asking you to chime in on some memo. Maintaining focus nowadays is harder than ever before. But in some ways, it's way more critical too. One of the things that we know about the most productive people and the most productive companies is that they create ways to enhance their focus. They, they manage their mind in such a way that they're able to focus on what's important and ignore distractions much better. And the way that they do this is by what's known as building mental models. Essentially telling themselves stories about what they expect to see, engaging in this kind of inner dialogue about what they think should be happening that allows their brain almost subconsciously to figure out what to pay attention to and what to ignore. One of my favorite examples of this is a big study that was done of nurses in NICUs. But some researchers from a group named Klein Associates went into some hospitals because they wanted to figure out why some nurses were so good at paying attention to the right things, whereas others got distracted by all the noise and bustle around them. And what they found is that the best nurses in NICUs, which is the neonatal intensive care unit, who were handling these babies, the nurses who were almost had a sixth sense or an ESP about figuring out which babies were sick and were getting sicker, were the ones who were constantly telling themselves stories about what they expected to see as they were walking around the hospital. So one of my favorite uh, interviews from this study was with a nurse named Darlene. And Darlene said that what she would do is that she always was keeping a picture in her brain of what she thought the, the perfect baby should look like. And so she would walk through the unit and she would notice when babies didn't kind of match that picture in her brain, right? And they would, match, they would mismatch that picture in kind of odd ways. Like she might be walking past a crib and she might expect a baby to be crying because babies cry all the time. And so if a baby was being uniquely silent, she would go over and she would try and figure out what's going on. Like, why is this baby being so quiet? Now, to all the other nurses, a quiet baby seems like a good thing. It seems like that baby is happy and it doesn't need any attention. But to Darlene, because she has this picture in her head of what the perfect baby should look like, when she sees a quiet baby, she thinks, that doesn't match the picture in my head. I need to go pay attention. And so she'd walk over and she'd see all these things that are all small issues on their own, right? The, maybe the baby's blood was taken from its heel and instead of a dot of blood on the Band-Aid, there's a little bit of a bigger splotch. Uh, maybe the, the baby's temperature is a little bit elevated, but nothing that like is out of place, nothing that's worrisome. But for Darlene and nurses like this, who keep this picture in their head, this mental model of what should be occurring, all of those things don't jive with the story inside their head. And so as a result, their attention is grabbed by it and they start saying to themselves, why? Why is this baby bleeding a little bit more than I expected? Why is its temperature off just a few degrees? And in this case, they discovered that the baby was incredibly sick. Now there was not a lot of evidence that it was sick. And in fact, if they had waited a half an hour, 45 minutes more, the baby actually probably would have passed away. But because Darlene noticed all of these things, because the baby that she was seeing in real life didn't match the picture in her head, she acted immediately. They started, a, they started the child on antibiotics. The sepsis, the infection in its system, was, was stamped out. But the only reason that Darlene was able to notice these warning signs, the only reason she sort of had this ESP or sixth sense for something going wrong was because she had a strong mental model. She had a picture in her head that she was comparing reality to. Now, not all of us work in NICUs, right? We don't work in hospitals. We're not dealing with life or death issues. But think for a minute about what it's like when you walk into a meeting and your boss asks you an unexpected question or you're, you're um, sitting there and you're, you're juggling the kids and dinner and suddenly your phone vibrates and it's this email that's, that causes this spike of panic. Our instinct at a moment like that is to react immediately, to type something that we end up re regretting later on or to answer our boss and blurt something out and we think to ourselves afterwards, God, I could have put that so much more eloquently. Why are some people so much better at maintaining their focus, at not reacting, at not getting distracted by all these things? 
It's because ahead of time, they've envisioned what they expect to, to see. They've envisioned what they expect to occur. So on the subway, when they're riding to work, they think about what is this day gonna be like? I know that I'm going to this meeting, what do I expect to occur at that meeting? And so when they walk in and their boss asks them some unexpected question, they, their brain almost subconsciously says, I didn't expect that question to occur. This isn't matching the picture in my brain of what I anticipated, so I need to put that question off. I need to, to say, can we take that offline and I'll answer that later. Or they have a picture in their brain of what it's gonna be like to, to deal with the kids and to make dinner. There's some type of expectation. And so as a result, when their pocket buzzes and an email comes in, they can say, I can't handle this right now. I need to give myself five minutes and I'll deal with this later. I use this all the time. It used to be that when I would ride the subway into work, I would spend that time reading the paper or I would try and get caught up on you know, memos or, or something else. What I do now, is I put everything away and I spend that 30 minutes just trying to envision what is this day going to be like? Because I know that the more that I have thought through what's about to occur, the more that I have a strong vision in my mind of what I should expect and anticipate, the more my subconscious is going to be able to decide this is what you should focus on, this is what you can safely ignore. I'm trying to train my brain by just doing a a couple of minutes of thinking through what's about to occur to make better decisions about where my focus should actually go. Mm -hmm.